before we go any further, now Lisa, I rang you on the on the day that you did this, um, but I haven't actually seen you since then. But mm. just all want to know how you got on last week because you were sleeping rough for a charity, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I um I spent a night on the pavement in Old Spitalfields Market for um, Centrepoint, which is a charity for young homeless people, kids under the age of 25. And uh, I just thank you for everyone who got behind me on that. And uh, we managed to raise over 150,000 pounds. <laughs> actually because I, I don't I mean I think my time of life lying on pavements is not something you want to do very often really <laughs> and obviously you can't pick a time in your life when you're homeless but, but what, so what was the point of it though mm. I mean you going out there and sleeping rough for one night yeah what exactly apart from raising money obviously which you did mm -hmm. what, awareness, what's the point of you doing that awareness so that you know we get to talk about it you know and we had a bit of media coverage down there and Mostly, really, I mean, you can't begin to pretend that you can find out what it's like by having one night on the streets because for a lot of these kids it's a reality every day of the week, especially this time of the year when it's freezing. Um, and it's the second time I've done it. I was and going I, to ask you this, why did you decide to do it again? Um, because the first time I did it, it, it changed me. I mean, I, I had these sort of preconceived ideas about homeless people. I just used to walk down the street in London, see a pile of clothes in a doorway and think, oh, don't look there, don't get involved, you know, that's all mm. a bit horrible. Uh, but in actual fact, um, they're, they're people like you and me. I used to think that, that homeless people were kind of almost predisposed to be homeless. They were like losers or junkies or, you know, alkies or what have you. But actually, it could have been my son, could have been my daughter, my brother, my sister. Mm. So that's, that changed me the first time I did it. And then the second time I thought... If I do it, then maybe more people will do it. And when I very first did it, only 50 people slept out. This year we had 250, so okay. so it's working, you know. Did you take it seriously, or did you have some luxury items with you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we had cardboard uh, sleeping bags that they provided for us, and I took a sleeping bag with me as well. But having had the benefit of doing it the first time, one of the hardest things when you're sleeping out, and this is what a lot of the homeless people have to endure, are bright lights and you inevitably try and sleep somewhere bright because you're not as vulnerable you're safer when there are bright lights around you but it's really hard to sleep when bright lights are shining on you and the noise as well you hear screams and fights in the middle of the night and when you're half asleep you don't know where it's coming from and it's really quite frightening um, so I took with me a um, one of those little travel kits you get on the aeroplane with an eye, eye patch thing <laughs> and a pair of earplugs <laughs> But, um, you know, I mean, that was... It's hardly a luxury, though. No, I mean, not it's really. I mean, I, thing to do. I did, a girlfriend came with me and she said, oh, can we take some nice smelly candles? I said, no. <laughs> it's, that's kind of, you know, not really what it's but about. But you, you did something, you know, that a lot of them do do, and that's you got on the booze, didn't you? You had a yeah, few drinks. Yeah, we got absolutely hammered before we did it. <laughs> because well, that helps you sleep, though. It does. I mean, I mean a, lot of, a lot of homeless people actually um, take drugs and drink as a result of being homeless. It doesn't necessarily start the other way around. So um, my girlfriend and I had, a, had a, a bit to drink and literally just to take off the edge, take the edge off the fact that we knew that we would be sleeping on the pavement. To do that stone cold sober, knowingly laying out your bed in the street mm. when it's teeming down with rain and it's freezing cold, it, it just, it's a really depressing mm. thing to have to do. So we decided to have a good drink up. And, and you, you also raised some really good points there just <gasps> about, you know, people's preconceived ideas. I mean, I, I must admit, I, I do tend to sort of look away. Um, you know, I am guilty of that. Would, would you two say that you're the, you're the same? You know, what, well, what you're yeah, the thing is, in London, I don't know, you know, depends, depends, depends on where you, live, where you live, I suppose, because, you know, you can go to places where you never see a homeless person, but in London, they are so common that you, you do tend to just walk on bikes. You, you know, you just don't really notice it because it's such a sight on the streets. It's so, it seems normal. I know mm. it's not at all, but also because it just seems, it does seem like a massive, massive problem. And Nationwide it is, 750,000 yeah, sure young people every year but it's more become homeless here. at one mm. point. That's but, a lot what of people. In, in terms of, you know, your preconceived ideas, did, did, do you, because Lisa, you mentioned you thought that maybe some people bit, were more predisposed well, to it. Do you, do, do you think that can? Um, I don't, I don't, I really don't know. I really have no idea. I've never really spoken to a homeless person in great depth apart from maybe a big issue seller um, 
But, you know, no, I don't. I really don't know enough about it. But I know there is help out there. And I do know mm. people who have known homeless people who have had the help. They've had all the help that they can possibly have. And they've still ended up back on the street somehow. I don't know how that happens and I don't know no why. Reason to it's stop. So, but, but it's something so far away from, from what your life is or, or anybody's life here mm. is um, that you can't possibly begin to understand it or even think that you can solve the problem. You can't. It's a society problem. A, a lot of, I watched a documentary once about this. And, and it was a lot of people who were interviewed just wanted to drop out of the capitalist world. They didn't want the mortgage, the wife, the family, everything, the pressures that go with that. Mm. And their way of escape was to, to be homeless and just have no worries of everyday Jane, life. Having met some of the homeless people at the centre point have helped, and let, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing. Um, a lot of people don't choose to be homeless. They, they, something goes wrong in their life and they just can't cope with it, mm -hmm. and the whole thing spirals out of control. I met a man who was in his 50s who was immaculately dressed, and I, and I was, you know, I thought, you know, what's he doing here? This was on the sleep out, and it turns out that actually um, he's got a daughter who was telling me about. He was very, very proud of her. She was at university in Scotland. And she'd come down to London and they'd meet for coffee in the hotel she was staying in and he'd go home, leave her and go and sleep on the streets. And that was because his marriage broke down and he turned to drink and the whole thing just became too much for him mm. to bear. Mm -hmm. So he didn't actually decide one day to be homeless. It just all became too yeah. much. Oh, well, well, well done you for doing it, Lisa. I mean, I, I must admit, I, I don't know if I could, so hats oh. off to you. Next year. Um, <laughs> okay.